What is up Rad Potential YouTube? In today's video, we're gonna be building this REW 13B rotary engine such that it can handle a little bit more horsepower than stock without completely sacrificing the drivability of the engine. This engine is a level up from the typical engine rebuild you've seen here in my shop. I've taken some inspiration from one of Rob Dom and Moto IQ's videos where they're talking about building a bulletproof two rotor rotary engine and I've worked with the local machine shop in order to implement some of those ideas in order to make this engine stronger. This engine I actually rebuilt once before. So it was in the baby blue Mariner blue $100,000 FD RX-7 that we sold on cars and bids last fall. Now you're like holy cow that engine was just rebuilt it was just put in that car it was just tuned and it's already back. Well we had a slight issue. Nothing that I did, nothing that the tuner did. It's just a rotary thing. These engines can be kind of fragile. So when I built the engine, the owner of the car wanted me to use OEM Mazda Apex seals. An OEM Mazda Apex seal, albeit is a nice soft seal, it's not going to tear up a set of housings very quickly, is not the strongest or the best Apex seal for pushing your rotary engine into that four to 500 horsepower range. So this car has a Turblown EFR 7670 single turbo. You remember we drove it, the turbo spool is super fast and at 14 pounds of boost, the things make well over 300 horsepower and it spools almost as fast as stock sequential twins. At that power level, we're pushing the limits of this stock apex seal. And what happened was a normal pull on the street, two, three, Four. We have the data log. Everything looked fine as far as engine vitals. We had one tickle of detonation. It broke the corner of the two-piece apex seal off. That small part played ping pong inside the engine, tried to ruin this rotor. Fortunately, it did not hurt the turbo. Unfortunately, we had to take the engine apart to rebuild it. So the new owner of the car reached back out to me as the engine builder was like, hey, I think this thing's blown up. Can you take a look at it? Let's get this fixed. Part of the game. So I coordinated pickup of the engine, got the engine back here, tore it down, and that's what we found. The other cool thing about this engine is that it was, it was machined for additional dowels through the engine block. In a standard two rotor rotary engine, you have four dowels that hold this engine together. Contrary to popular belief, the tension bolts, which run through the coolant passages of your rotary, and clamp the whole engine together, do not add any sort of shear strength to the rotary engine being spun apart. You imagine you've made a cheeseburger, put a bunch of toothpicks in it, try to spin the buns off of your cheeseburger. That's what the dowels are doing. The tension bolts are not preventing that. Now, at a certain point of deflection, this tension bolt will be in shear and it is going to help strengthen the engine. But if this tension bolt is in shear, a lot of other things have gone wrong. The four OEM dowels go right here in this top corner by your oil filler neck all the way from the front iron through the two housings to the rear. There will be two of them in line. I said four. There's another set of dowels down here on the bottom under the exhaust. As Rob Dom mentioned in his video, when you look at how the rotary engine is making power, all of your torque and horsepower is happening right here where these spark plug holes are. So under the dowel that is in the top of the engine. It's very common for these rotary engines to break the front or rear iron. If we take a closer look at the rear iron, right here is where that dowel lands. So this dowel from the top of the housing goes right there. On an FD REW, this rear iron is very reinforced in this area because of this issue. If you compare an FD REW iron to a Series 4 Turbo 2 or an old school 12A, the dowel landing area is probably half the size of this one. But at 500 horsepower, any sort of detonation shock to the drivetrain puts this area of your rotary engine at risk. So when this engine tried to eat itself alive, it ruined the old housings. So right here is a brand spanking new housing from Mazda for an REW engine. These are pricey. However, if you're wanting a high quality, good compression, power making rotary engine, I would suggest when you rebuild it, 
new housings or really, really good condition housings, or at least get your housings resurfaced is a must in order to make this thing make good compression. So I had to take this housing brand new to the machine shop and have them machine or drill these holes to line up with the irons that were previously machined for these dowels because this engine actually had these dowels in it already, but the new housings did not come that way. So the local machine shop, they had never actually seen a rotary engine before, but to any competent machinist, making a hole a certain size that lines up with other holes, very, very simple task regardless of what it's in, especially this one being in aluminum. One of the issues that we did run into though, is when they drilled these holes, aluminum has a tendency to smear the chips of the aluminum onto what you're machining, especially with a hole that's as deep as this housing. So we actually had a really small hone and went in there and polished up these holes so that these dowels can slide through here very easily, but they also have very minimal play. You don't want too much play in these such that they're actually functioning for you and you're not just putting all the stress in whichever dowel has the tightest tolerance. Previous to this video, which we're just gonna final stack this engine, I've dry stacked this engine two or three times, making sure that each hole for these additional dowels, the stock dowels, everything lines up and the engine will go together and it will come back apart. Because one of the things that's very hard about when you start adding, whether it's a full 12 millimeter stud kit to your engine, you start machining it for extra dowels, is that assembly gets tight, especially disassembly after you've ran this engine and heat cycled it and it's got all this coolant, dirt, grime stuff that just somehow gets in every orifice of your engine. I've had to hammer this engine apart the first time I rebuilt it and the second time I rebuilt it, I also had to slide hammer most of these dowels out of there and it gets pretty tough to take one of these apart in an organized fashion. One step that I have taken in order to ensure that this engine assembly goes smoothly is I have super glued the two piece apex seals together. So if you order OEM Mazda two piece seals, they will come glued. We've decided to run RX parts apex seals in this engine. I've never ran them before, but with recommendations from some of my friends, they're a good apex seal for that horsepower level. So we're gonna see how these work over time. We'll see how these brand new housings wear to these brand new apex seals over time. I love keeping in touch with everybody who I've done engine work for because I like to learn about these engines, but I don't have the time to put a ton of miles on 15 or 20 different engine packages and then see how the housing and apex seals wear. One of the things that's hard to find is good data on which apex seals destroy housings, which ones are harder, softer. I know Rob alluded to him doing all sorts of x-ray stuff on these apex seals, and I would love to see that information, but I get it why some of that information doesn't get shared because everybody's in competition. No one wants to uh, give away all their trade secrets on their apex seals. So gluing these together is gonna help whenever I have to use a rubber mallet to tap some of these dowels and get them all seated. One thing that you don't want to happen when you're installing an engine is for these little corners to pop out of the rotor while you're trying to clamp the engine together. Mazda, when they build these in the factory, if you go look at pictures, all of these little lobes on the outside of your housing, this big square one here, well, they actually clamp these pieces together as they assemble it. So you've got your front iron on the bench, they put the rotor and E-shaft in, when they set that housing on, they clamp it together to hold the coolant seals tight. So one thing that I'm unable to do here is clamp each piece together as I go. I would love to get that ability here soon or maybe build a table specifically for building these engines together, much like a woodworker would clamp pieces of wood together to make a cool cutting board, they clamp these down. So when they go to hammer a dowel in, or in our case, the dowels fit pretty tight, the rotor seals are all spring loaded. Things can pop out. They'll fall down in your engine, and then you gotta start all over. So we really wanna make sure that doesn't happen. So that's why we're gluing these apex seals together. One of the things that's very important when you're building your rotary engine is knowing the direction of your oil control rings on your rotor and not getting them installed backwards. Your rotary engine has a front and a rear rotor orientation. It doesn't mean you specifically have to put one of the rotors in the front and one of the rotors in the rear. Only on old school 12As do you have to do that. The combustion pocket is specifically shaped, 
but on an REW, you can use either rotor in either location until you put the oil control rings in this engine. So your front rotor, this one right here, I'm gonna use as the front, labeled front. The gear side of this rotor is the front of the engine. The non-gear side is the back of the engine. So when you go to install your oil control rings, they're directional. So the back of the front rotor is the non-gear side. You're gonna take your oil control ring spring right here in your right hand, the round edge goes down. So right, round, down, rear, four R's. Right, round, down, ear. I guess there's a D in there. Sounded better saying four R's. You're gonna take that spring, right, round, down, and you're gonna put that on the back or the rear of the front rotor. Once these oil control rings are now in this rotor, if you put the front rotor now on the back of the engine, the orientation of the oil control ring spring is backwards. Thus, when this rotor rotates in the engine, this oil control ring can spin and it's gonna burn the oil control ring up very quickly and now your engine is going to smoke like a freight train. So, don't mess this part up when you're building your engine. Take very good care to assemble your rotors correctly and make sure to label everything. Honestly, one of the smoothest engine assemblies I've had to date. I think taking the extra time to dry fit this engine, so effectively building it without the rotors or the E-shaft in it, making sure everything fits, really enhanced my ability to get this engine together effectively without making any mistakes or having anything hold me back. Fitting these extra dowels, you could see I had to tap them in with a rubber mallet. The tolerance is very tight especially once you get all four of them in there. So the center iron went on, just tapping it down with the mallet, just like I did these last dowels. You'll see the rear iron go on here in a second. It will basically be the same process. When you're assembling just a regular two rotor engine without these extra dowels, you can just push the rear iron down by hand. It doesn't require that much force. Nothing while you're assembling your rotary engine should require an excessive amount of force. Everything should fit together nice and tight by hand without having to hammer or force it together. Don't forget your dowel o-rings and make sure you put your center shaft in the right direction. It will go together with this end backwards. You can build the whole engine and then you go to put the front end on and it's wrong. Quick little pre rear iron checklist. We got our dowels, we got the dowel o-ring, we got RTV silicone on the edges of the irons and housings here and here. I've got to put my coolant seals in the iron, pop this guy on. Apex seals, plugs, corners, side seals, E-shaft in the correct direction, all that stuff. Always double, triple check your work. Make sure the coolant seals aren't twisted and everything on here is ready to go. We're ready to seal this baby up. sound we like to hear. Before we can put our front cover on, make sure that you get your oil pump secured, oil pump drive chain secured, your drive gear for the oil metering pump, the keyway, your Torrington bearings, get the front stack all put together, and don't forget to put 
this little white Teflon support and your O-ring in between your front cover and your engine because if you do, you will not have good oil pressure. All of your oil will be spewing out in between the front cover and the engine itself not going through your bearings. The last thing you check before you're done with your engine rebuild is in play. So I checked it before I put the front cover on, but in play is the little bit of play that you have up and down in the eccentric shaft so that all the bearings and everything is happy. With everything being complete, the engine is stacked, tension bolts are torqued, stationary gear bolts all torqued, everything's assembled, the oil pump is primed and full of oil. I've got to put the pickup and the oil pan on and throw the water pump on and this thing will be done. But this is where I'm going to leave you guys for the next video. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. This is a very random engine stack video, but wanted to show you guys this neat engine with these extra dowels in here. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Rob Dom talks about that in one of his videos collaborating with Moto IQ. They go into detail, it's like an hour long video about all the things to build a bulletproof two rotor. And I'm excited to be able to have this engine as a case study for seeing how well it holds up with these new Apex seals, the dowels, the fresh set of housings. This thing should be ready to rock for a long time and put a lot of smiles on a lot of people's faces seeing this RX-7 rip around. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Stay tuned for more four rotor stuff. We're gonna do the hybrid Renesis NA, I think. I'm gonna change my build from turbo and we're gonna just port the crap out of it and go all out NA hybrid Renesis in the RX-8. And I'm gonna keep ripping the Rad X7 because it's running great right now. So with that, comment below any questions. Comment below anything you guys wanna see about these cars in the future videos. I can make sure to show them. But with that, keep it rad. We'll see you in the next one. Hey. It's been a minute. I guess it's not really been that long since I stacked the engine, maybe a month, doing the Radix 7 engine. This thing went together nicely though. I'm really getting on this train of not painting stuff on these engines. I'm really just liking the bare cast iron and the bare aluminum and the bare aluminum front cover. Just simple, easy to clean, doesn't scratch. No more Iron Man theme crazy paint job B stripes engines. We're just we're just leaving it raw metal. Also, I can't wait for you guys to see what's happening in the next video because I'm super stoked. It's a super cool collaboration. I can't thank those guys enough. So with that, peace.